working with players and using the talent that he has to, to create a style around them. All right, so the Canes in white, the visiting Rattlers in the green, headed right to left. Miami will go left to right here in the first half. Officials for this basketball game here this evening, Billy Covington Jr., Jerry Heater, and Kevin Milner. Ball's in the air. It'll be Rattlers basketball, the first possession here tonight. Let's see if the Canes can uh, ramp up some defensive intensity right out of the gate. We were talking earlier, and, and, and we thought the first two halves of those first two games, just not enough urgency. Uh, most definitely, Kyle. They just didn't seem to move with a purpose, whereas in the, game, the first game with Lafayette, everything they did was with purpose. But they came around in the second half. I just hope they pull it off here where they can come out with intensity and purpose right now. Put back is good for the junior out of Atlanta, Jalen Bates. This Rattlers team, Murray, under the direction of Robert McCollum in his sixth season, returns just four players, and a majority of his roster are junior college transfers. Yeah, he definitely has a challenge on his hand trying to get them all to mesh and play together, and you know he's had some success uh, at FAMU in the, um, in the conference play, so. I look forward to it. He'll probably give him a challenge tonight. Florida a and is 0 for 3. They are 0 for Oregon to start their season. Out in Oregon, taking on the Ducks, Portland, and Oregon State. They started 0 and 3. Again, returning just four players. Robert McCollum, another guy. We talk about Coach Larinaga reviving a program a little bit. Robert McCollum in his sixth season has done a really nice job, in particular in conference play in the SWAC. Yes, he has. So he's, he's a uh, creative guy as well, and he's going to come out and make the most of what talent he has. And, you know, with the uh, junior college kids coming in and transfers, it's always tough to get them to mesh quickly, but he's done a great job of that. There's a steal for Wooga Poplar in transition. Shimmy's in the lane, hangs and hits. I tell you, Wooga really knows how to use his body to get himself open. Great steal and great finish. Physically a much different basketball player in 2022 as opposed to last season in 2021. Hans Luis, Gene, Jalen Bates, Chase Bars, Noah Marin, and Jordan Tillman. The starting five here for FAMU tonight. And here he is, Wilga taking it to the finish, using his body strength there to face up, to square up to the goal and, and, and finish it off. Foul was on Jordan Miller. He on the court with Isaiah Wong, Norchad O'Meara, Nigel Pack, and Wilga Poplar. So the same starting five for Coach Larinaga through Miami's first three games. That's taken away by Miami. And now the Rattlers get it right back. Bates swipes it away, and that's a big block at the rim for O'Meara. Yes, it is. That's a little sign to the uh, Rattlers to not bring it in there unless they bring it in strong. Here it is. He's going up to the hole, and O'Meara comes up from behind, swats that ball. Look at that. Very athletic play. Marin gets it into bars, and Marin gets it right back. And we've got a whistle on the floor. Billy Covington will chat it over. I'm not sure what he called here. Well, they're going to call a foul on Norchad O'Meara. It'll be his first and team second. I think the refs are trying to get control early here. There's a lot of physicality going on underneath, and I think they're trying to get them to clean it up a little bit. Well, you'd think they'd probably go talk to the players then. It was odd that they called the foul, but I'm not sure what elicited the discussion between the two. Tillman top of the key with the basketball for the Rattlers. 2-2. Two, two. two minutes and te 10 seconds in here in Miami tonight. To the rack, Merritt gets it swatted away and take it away. Jordan Miller in transition, a strong finish at the rim. And you know what? That was a great lead pass for O'Meer hit, hit, to hit Jordan Miller on the fly there. Great play, great teamwork between the two. It's a high-low offense for FAMU, a motion offense. Three in the corner on the way, no good, too short for Bates. Wong in the paint, triple team, had it taken away. It was swatted away by Hans Luis Jean, the junior out of Lake Worth. Yeah, you never want to pick up your dribble. That's when you get in trouble that way. That 
rolled off the rim for Tillman. Wong tries again and misses off the back of the iron. Jordan Tillman, probably the best player for FAMU. He's got 36 points through his team's first three games. He can shoot the three. There's a turnover for FAMU. But Tillman, and then you take a look at Byron Smith, who does not start. Uh, but he's the second leading scorer through three games. Yeah. And he's going to check in right now. So between the two, they, they have uh, averaged uh, 20 points here. So they're going to have to put up some points tonight to try to hang in with the Canes. Tariq Issa, the junior out of Toronto and Gillette College, a transfer checks in for the Rattlers. Rattlers in a straight man. Yeah, Miami loves to run that motion offense. Omir calling for it on the baseline. Spins, hangs, and fires, and he makes it. Yeah, that's what makes him a great asset as well. He's such, got such a big body. He's a bruiser down low, and he can really turn and have a soft touch on the shot like that one. 6-2 Miami early, although not a whole lot of offense in the early going. Tillman again lost his dribble, and he steps out of bounds. Does Byron Smith another turnover for Florida a &M, or did Smith call a timeout in time? There's, he may have. I think Smith called the timeout in time. Under 16, media timeout here in Miami. 6-2, Canes early. They struggled in the first half. Now, not so indicative against UNC Greensboro, but they did trail after the first half in both games before really turning it on. This is an example right here that you can't control your shooting every night, right? Some nights it's just not going to fall like it didn't against Lafayette. So you've got to counter that with great defense. And so as long as Miami continues to produce on the defensive end, they can overcome the Knights they're not shooting well. What do you see out of Miami early offensively here tonight? I see a lot more patience than I did against Lafayette and Greensboro, so I think it's going to end up well, uh, going well for them, taking their time getting better shots. Nice shot. Byron Smith hits just inside the three-point line with the shot clock running low. Here they come in with the press, trying to trap him. Luis Jean spins, he finds bars, and a pair for bars, and we're all square. That's a nice trail shot from bars. Catch the big man coming down the lane, hit it from the top of the key. And presumably Robert McCollum turns up the defensive pressure, uh, maybe to force Miami into a turnover and not let him get too comfortable offensively as Jordan Miller has it swatted away by Issa, the junior at six feet, eight inches tall. Now Tillman, an opportunity to give FAMU the lead, he does. Miami's going to have to pick it up. They're getting a little bit of a lapse here. They need to uh, start focusing and concentrating. I think the coach changing his, uh, McCollum changing his defense has flustered Miami a little bit here. First time really this season through two games that Miami's seen that hybrid full court pressure make you work to get the ball across the timeline. Yeah, they make you be patient and take care of the basketball. Five on the shot clock. Nigel Pack has it swatted away. Working baseline right in trouble. Isaiah Wong stepped out of bounds. Another turnover for Miami. The Canes are a little bit rattled. I think that half-court trap has rattled them a little bit. Now they just need to relax, calm down, and get back into their game. Jordan Chapman checks in for Florida A&M. A quick 6-0 run for FAMU out of the timeout. Nearly taken away by Wong. Good pressure atop the three-point line for Isaiah Wong. Now Smith works in the paint. Had a good look at the rim, but Omir said not so fast, young man. Another great block by Omir. Tillman's a baller. Smith hands it off. Baseline, 10-foot jumper for Issa. No good. And they sky at the rim. No foul underneath. It's finally in the hands of Anthony Walker, who nearly took it away. Isaiah Wong in transition. Poplar for three. Too strong. Ball's in the air. Tillman brings it down before it rolls out of bounds. Miami did everything right on that transition. It just didn't go for him. 
Tillman with the left hand up and under off the uh, off the glass. Wow, that's an eight nothing run. You yeah, see, that's a tough move. That's where Omeyer came over, but he didn't commit and come over and try to take a charge. He's used to blocking the ball now, so he's going for the block on that instead of step over and try to stop penetration. Tillman's got four. Rattlers on an eight nothing run out of the under 16 media timeout. Walker had Omir open underneath, but he hesitated. Now Poplar rises and hits. That's a sweet pull up right there. It's a bit of a lost start in college basketball today. That 10 to 15 foot range jumper. Yeah, everybody gets so focused on that three point line. They do forget about the medium to short range shots, which many times are what blows a game go uh, open, right? You hit a few, if you're having trouble from the outside, you shoot a few mid-range. Tillman catches nothing. Poplar! Great. That's an easy alley-oop right there. Great teamwork from those guys. You can tell they played together. They didn't look hardly at all to each other and just knew it was coming. And that's Miami basketball in transition. Force a turnover into an easy bucket. You got it. Miami, the second best team in college basketball last season in transition as Poplar sends Jordan Chapman, the sophomore out of Birmingham. Here it is, he throws it up, knows exactly where, where he'll be, and there he is. Really knowing your teammates right there. They could probably do that in the dark. Wilga with a little limp as he goes back to the Miami bench along with Nigel Pack. And the limp is getting a little worse and now he's shaking his head as he works his way back towards Miami's bench. I think Kyle it looked like he had a little bit of a Charlie horse right so yeah. hit him with the knee just in on that play so hopefully it's a short lived one. Noah Marin has it being guarded tightly by Isaiah Wong. Now a double team up top. Good luck for Williams. Nails it. Peyton Williams redshirt sophomore out of Tampa hits. Boston State Community College transfer. Miami was a little slow uh, on the recovery there. All right, you got to help and recover. You got to get out on your man. You can't just leave. Anthony Walker's three is way offline, but North Chad O'Meer gets it right back. An offensive rebound and a flush. He was in the perfect position on the weak side for that ball to come off on the opposite side. Picked it up. Use that strength to go out and flush it. Anthony Walker has worked a lot over the course of the summer on his three-point ball. Uh, and it has just not come to fruition here early in games as Tariq Issa takes a couple too many steps. We'll head to the under 12-minute media timeout. All square here in Coral Gables. 12-12. Double header for you. Florida State hosts Mercer at the Tucker Center in Tallahassee at 6.30 Eastern. Then, number seven, Duke hosts Bellarmine at Cameron Indoor, both on the ACC Network and the ESPN. And Murray, how about those Florida State Seminoles off to an 0-3 start this season? Lost home at home against Troy last night. That's uh, an awful start. Yeah, the state seems to struggle right now, right? UF lost to FAU last night, so it's uh, gonna have to really knuckle down and start playing hard. Out of the timeout, that's it, Joseph. Great bucket out of the timeout. Miami's gonna pick up a little full court pressure here. A little token pressure. The first three of the game for Miami, they connect. Easy bucket underneath. Yeah, Omeyer reached over, but he didn't come over with the body. He just did a little bit of a reach wave by. Rattler staying that full court pressure. Nigel Pack and Bensley Joseph running the point. And North Channel mere travel. Not positive that was a travel. Jordan Miller checks in for North Channel mere Back in for FAMU is Jordan Tillman. Tillman with a quick rest. He does not sit a whole lot. Uh, if he's not in foul trouble again, the best player for Florida A&M University. Yeah, they're going to need him on the court for his firepower. He's got 36 points for the team's his first three games against Oregon, Oregon State, and Portland out there in the Pacific Northwest last week. Bars with his back turned to the basket. 
Tillman has it, working on the left wing. Fires, and it's blocked by Anthony Walker. Here comes Miami. It's a three-on-one in transition. Walker had a hard time picking it up and establishing a dribble, and then Jordan Miller has it taken away by Chase Bars. That was fantastic defense by Walker down here. It's just a shame they couldn't convert at the other end. I think Walker ended up surprised he was open with the ball as close as he was down there. He had his head up and down a couple of times and just could not find a dribble on the basketball. So 15-14, Miami leads, 9.35 left to play. That shot is way off to the right, out of the right hand of Byron Smith. Again, Miami in transition, working quickly. Jordan Miller stops and pops, fires away for three. It's a bit too strong. Anthony Walker tried to corral the rebound. He couldn't. It's into the hands of Bars. He's their best rebounder for Florida A&M, Chase Bars, the senior out of Tampa and the transfer out of Western Michigan. Tillman in the lane. Nearly had it taken away. Now a double team up top. Tillman wants the basketball over here on the left wing. He's barking for it. Chapman hangs and fires, and he gets fouled. He'll head to the free throw line. It's kind of a sloppy uh, possession there. Miami's doing some jump switching where they go with the double team. Here he is, tries to drive baseline. They cut him off, and Walker comes over and leaves his feet and commits a foul. First rattles in and out for Jordan Chapman, the sophomore out of Birmingham, Shelton State Community College transfer. He's really physical in the paint. You saw it on his drive there. And he's really good on the glass as well. Yeah, he's a really good rebounder, no doubt. Again, they'll need that tonight. Here they come with the uh, three-quarter court trap right here. I mean, he's looked to get it to the middle. There it is. That's how you break the trap right now there. Now a three is on the way, and another air ball for Anthony Walker, who's having an awful time from three-point territory to start the season. He seems to be rushing himself a little bit when he gets the ball like that. Maybe put it down for a dribble or two and then take a shot. There's the mid-range we're talking about. Walker really athletic, too. He can get to the rim. And that's an offensive foul on Chase Bars. Good possession for Miami right there. They had great help. Caused the foul right there. Here he is. Coming off the pick. There's Walker stepping over to help and creates the foul. Really good help from Walker. And Bars just had a really wide base there at the three-point line and took that left knee and just gave him a little bit of a... He's kind of shoved him a little bit. They, they think they can get something out of this trap. I think they're going to stay in it for a little while. Wilga Poplar checks back in for Miami. He had a little... Uh, got locked up with his knee early on, and he kind of wobbled on over to the bench as Nigel Pack hits a pair. But uh, Poplar back in, he was... Kind of shakes off that limp we saw earlier. Uh, that's a move from Pack that I think he's done before at K-State. <laughs> Many times. First team all Big 12 last year. Associated Press first team all Big 12. Average 17 points for the Wildcats. Yeah, I think there's a lot of teams that have seen that. North Chad O'Meara. I'll tell you, Kyle, there's that athleticism, right? Not only do they have skilled players, but these guys can get up and get it done. They go up and catch the ball. Another fantastic teamwork on those two parts. A perfectly executed lob by Isaiah Wong. And without hesitation, North Chad O'Meara with a one-handed slam off the alley-oop. And you can see how plays like that really pick up the intensity right here. Right, they pick up the turnover right here. Another takeaway, a quick three for Nigel Pack. No good, too strong off the back of the iron. Now Florida A&M with an opportunity in transition. Chapman gets to the rim and hits. 19-17, close ball game. 6.50 left to play here in the first half. Miami has played now what has been three really close ball games here in the first half. Suppose it's an opportunity to run away with it here, but uh, it, it's been close early. Isaiah Wong's three is no good. Miami's struggling from the three-point line here in the early going tonight. Now just one of seven. 
They made 13 threes against UNC Greensboro last Friday night. And yeah, that's Miami basketball. Take another look at that alley-oop. Look at great, great teamwork together. Again, you can tell they played together. Isaiah throws a perfect. 1917, Miami leads 625 left to play in the first half here in Coral Gables. Uh, Murray, your impressions here through what? Nearly the first 14 minutes of this contest. It's been a little streaky out there. There's been times with fantastic execution and really good defensive intensity. And then they have laps. There are a few lapses here and there that have cost them. I'm not sure I like the rebounding. Miami's only uh, has eight rebounds and uh, FA, uh, Florida A&M has 12. I'd like to see that get a little higher. Florida A&M has four offensive rebounds. Miami just one. Poplar hangs and fires way too strong. And the rebound is down and in the hands of Jalen Bates. Now to the rack is Smith. He fires. No good. Poplar and Miller soar for the rebound. In transition, another alley-oop. Wong to Omir. There it is. Great pass by, by Poplar up to Wong. Wong hits him for the alley-oop. Something else to keep an eye on. Miami just one of seven from the three-point line. They were 13 of 27 in their last game, 10 of 34. They shot 34 threes in the first game of the season. So not all that bad. Shooting over 30%, well over 30% from the three-point line, but struggling here tonight. There's a three on the way. Jordan Miller corrals the rebound. It's too short by Byron Smith. Now North Chattel Mir again. He is just starting to take advantage of those rattlers down there in the paint. Yeah, he is. He really worked the baseline well there. Took it underneath, came up on the other side for an easy hoop for him. O'Meara's got 10 points and two rebounds. And now he's got a takeaway. Here he comes in transition. He's got 10, give him 12. Quick hands, strong finish. Really playing well right now. Really Robert really? McCollum wants a timeout. I don't blame him. We'll take a quick break. Quick 6 nothing run in a minute for Miami. Twenty-five seventeen, Miami leads it. Eight point lead, their largest of the night. 456 left to play here in the half. Miami on a quick six nothing run out of the media timeout. Yep, doing it on the defensive end, right? Creating opportunities for them at the other end. Really good transition plays by Miami. And the problem for Florida a &M, that's four turnovers in the last four minutes. Nearly another, now a double team up top. Smith's in trouble. And now an advantage for Florida a &M. Williams can't hit. He had Byron Smith down low and underneath, or check that Jalen Bates. It was a three on two opportunity. Florida a &M couldn't take advantage. Now on the other end, look at that beautiful spin move in the paint for Jordan Miller. Fantastic athleticism by Jordan, great finish. Great defense on the other end. That's really what created that down on the other end. Went left in the paint, spun back right. That shot's no good. Bates with an offensive rebound. Another opportunity now for Tillman and company. Williams will fire away for three and hit. Peyton Williams. Redshirt sophomore at 6'7", 205. A forward, hits a three. Stops the bleeding of the Miami run. Here comes Isaiah Wong. Open three. Wooga Poplar passes it up. Says, you know what? I am going to take it. Miami's one of eight. Foul on the floor. That's on Byron Smith. Timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. 12 points. He's six of six. A perfect six of six from the floor. Couple of blocks. So Mir's got two rebounds. Having a terrific night so far. He is. I tell you, six for six. Pretty easy to get when you're two foot away. So he's really doing a good job <laughs> getting good position inside. He's got a couple of alley oop dunks thrown to him. So uh, he's just uh, he's having a great game. Miami, and those two blocks too. And Miami's been great inside the arc. They're one of eight from three, but 13 of 24 overall, shooting 54 percent. Florida a and with nine turnovers. Miami's got 11 points off those nine turnovers. Really the difference in the game so far. And that's really that hedge against the, the games where you don't shoot well, right? If you can get the other team to turn the ball over with your defense, you can get to the other end and get some easy hoops. Miami ball out of the media timeout. Inside to Miller who gets fouled. He'll head to the free throw line. Bates committed the foul. 
So Miami by seven as Jordan Miller heads to the free throw line. Women's basketball, game of the night, coming up on Thursday. ACC Network and the ESPN app. Dawn Staley, number one South Carolina, taking on Clemson at Little John Coliseum. Both teams undefeated. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern. That should be a good one. There in Clemson, South Carolina, Murray, your alma mater. Yes, it is, and I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful place to be. I wish I was there sometime. It is one of the best campuses in the Atlantic Coast Conference in the entire country. It's it's amazing. A lot of people will fly into Atlanta and make the two-hour drive, and that monstrous campus and that football stadium just appears over the rolling hills of Clemson, South Carolina. It's an awesome place. It is quite a sight to behold. And it comes out of nowhere. Having those tiger paws on the road yeah. leading you in, too. So it's really, you've got to get to a football game there if you've not been to one. Nice move in the paint for Jalen Bates. Big game in Clemson this Saturday between Miami and the Tigers. Some would say big. Miami at the moment a 19 and a half point underdog. Oh, Channel Neal, bucket in the foul, rocks the baby underneath. This is a demonstration of his upper body strength here. Watch him square up with the, with the uh, backboard. See, he's got his arms squared, boom. So strong. Yep. Catch it down low, take a look and see where everybody is, put it on the floor, go straight up with his shoulders facing the basketball and in that backboard. See him rock the baby underneath the rim. Telling Florida a and you're too small. You can't guard me here tonight. So far, they have it. He's seven of seven from the floor. One of one from the line. 15 points, two rebounds, and an assist. Miami by 10 in transition. Jordan Miller. Florida A&M is really flustered by Miami's jump switch, right? When two guys come together, they're double teaming them, and that's really causing Florida A&M some problems at top. Having a heck of a time even setting anything up offensively. Nigel Pack, tight contested defense. Three in the corner is good. Hans Luis Jean, junior out of Northwest Kansas Technical College, another transfer for Robert McCollum. O'Meara wants the ball down low. He's calling for it. Poplar hands it to Miller. That's an easy assist for Wooga Poplar. Very creative. He went down the left side of the lane. There it was. O'Meara, everybody was focusing on him trying to post up on the right side. Leads at 11 for Miami. Southpaw Tillman drives left on Wong, fades away and misses. Look at Poplar has the rebound. And Miami's gonna push the ball up the floor again. Nigel Pack for three, no good, rattles in and out. Norchad O'Meara fighting through three rattlers. And does he have it? Well, he might have possession of it, but it's a jump ball and it'll be Miami basketball. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Good hustle by the Hurricanes. Ball comes off getting on the floor after it here. Look, it's the, uh, for the entire game right there. Good hustle. Boys, O'Meara strong. Chase Bars checks in for Florida A&M. 133 left to play here in the half. Largest lead for Miami's been 12. Both teams have gone on an eight nothing run. Isaiah Wong gets tangled up underneath. And he'll head to the free throw line. Florida a and is playing a man underneath the goal like that, which is unusual, right? So that's exactly what can happen if you play a man down low. Most teams play a zone when the ball's out under the basket like that. It's the second or third time that FAMU's gotten beat right there off yep. that inbounds pass on the baseline. Wong makes the first. By the way, for Isaiah Wong, his first point here this evening, and it's a milestone point for Wong. With this one point that he just made, the front end of those two free throws, he's now the 18th player in Miami Hurricanes program history with 1,300 total points. So congratulations to Isaiah Wong. The fourth year junior has been terrific for Miami, and now he puts it home. That jump switch continues to give Florida A&M some trouble at the top. 
Miami's going to get turnover after turnover out of that. Four quick points for Wong after he was shut out for nearly the entire first half. Omir pacing the way with 15. Could have been another turnover. Byron Smith bailed out by the foul. Here's the Wong dunk. Elevate, send it home. That's the reward for bet playing good defense on the other end. That's similar to the dunk we saw against Lafayette in the second half that sparked Miami in the opener. Yes, it is. That's the thing about dunks, right? Most people think, oh, it's just for show. It's, it really does serve a purpose. It, it, it really does get the team fired up and sometimes can turn a game. A couple of big dunks for Miami here in the first half, leading by 15. Under a minute left to play. Much more aggressive first half offensively and with a purpose for the Hurricanes here tonight. Bars is wanting to get involved down low. There he is. Good look for Bars that he misses. Gets his own offensive rebound. Byron Smith out to Chapman, who drives in the paint and gets a bucket. Chapman's got good strength. He's going to the ball. I mean, he's going to the hole with strength. Jordan Miller's got 10 and 3 for Miami. Keynes can hold on to it for the last shot. Straight man here. Nigel Pack might just wave him off and go to work on Chapman. He goes right, comes back left. Stutter step. Chapman to his feet at the horn. Nigel Pack gets fouled with 1.6 left. He had Jordan Chapman on ice skates on the right wing, and Nigel Pack will head to the free throw line. Whoop. I tell you, that foul at the buzzer is not going to make uh, Coach McCollum happy. Boy, Chapman got caught on his heels, and he hit the deck. So leading by 13. Pack could make it 15. Headed to the locker room at halftime. Makes the first. He's got three points. Miller and O'Meara pacing the way. They've got 25 of Miami's 41 here in the first half. It's amazing. Wong's got four. Pack might have four. Ah, he misses, so he's got three, but those two guys can get hot in the hurry. Halftime here in Miami. Canes lead the Rattlers by 14. Big first half for that young man, North Chad O'Meara. A perfect seven of seven from the floor. Three rebounds, 15 points. Canes in control at the recess. Here tonight for Miami, they will visit Providence. Be a good ball game. How about Isaiah Wong there in the first half? Four points, creeping his way up the all-time scoring leaderboard in Miami. Most recently, Davon Reed cracked that top 20. Now a member of the Denver Nuggets, along with Bruce Brown, Lonnie Walker, the other king of the NBA with the Lakers. Isaiah Wong's had a fantastic career here, and I expect he'll continue to do so and continue to move up that ladder. Jordan Miller swatted that pass away. Florida A&M down 14 at the break. See if Coach McCollum's got a little magic here in the second half. First and foremost, he's got to find a way to get the Rattlers back in it. Three on the shot clock. Tillman driving left, hangs and fires and misses. Tried to get his own offensive rebound. Nor Chad Omir. Wooga Papa. In transition! There's a highlight reel right there. Fantastic recognition by. Was that Omir threw it ahead? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. The Wooga Poplar wow. A nice feed from Omir and Poplar just cocked back starting at about the ACC logo and said, everybody look out. That was a poster shot right there. Wow. Yeah, if somebody got a good shot of that, it's going to be on his wall for a long time. He is a freak. Really interesting watching this Miami team early through the first couple of the games, Murray, because we've talked about the, the size differential and the height differential. Uh, they're going to be crippled in that department a little bit this season, but they make up for it like they did all of last season in their Elite Eight run with the athleticism, the speed. Yeah, I tell you, they've got so many weapons, too, uh, Kyle. They, they can get it from different places, and they just get out and they run, and they amp up the defense, and they create create a lot of offense off the defense, and they'll, they're going to be in the game all the time if they play that way. Especially in transition. There's a turnover. 
North Chad O'Meara up the pack. He lobs it up for O'Meara. And you know, that's a great play by Pack. He probably would love to score more tonight, but in that case, he gave it up right there, and it's just a really good teamwork by those guys. Or Chad O'Meara, now a perfect 8 of 8 from the floor, 17 points and 4 rebounds. Probably hoping he can corral 6 more rebounds, get himself a double-double. Stuff the stat sheet a little bit here tonight. Turnaround jumper off the windows, good for Hots Luis G. Nice move there, a little spin move, follow through strong. So the next game for Miami, a step up in weight class, visiting Providence, then playing either Maryland or St. Louis. We have the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off tournament in Connecticut this weekend. Foul on the floor. Here's another look at that dunk. Yeah, here's Omar with the great recognition, and here it is right here. Showtime. Oh, my goodness. A little like uh, Michael Cooper from the Lakers way back when. Chase Bars, the forward for Florida A&M, made a nice business decision once he got in the paint, too, because if he went up in an effort to stuff Luka Poplar, it wasn't going to end well, so he said, Go right ahead. I'll think, catch you on the other end. I think he just hopes he isn't in the background of that picture. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Turned his back and ducked. <laughs> Took a U-turn there at the last second. Yeah, yep. 45-32 Miami leads. Rattlers picking up the pressure now. See if they can get some turnovers up top, get some quick buckets. They were successful with it early in the first half for a couple of minutes until Miami settled down. Yeah. That's a sign of a mature team right there. Poplar for three. Things are really kicking for the ca uh, ticking for the Canes right now. You know, he hammers one home and then he hits it from deep. There's a foul. They'll get Nigel Pack. Yeah, I think that was just a little cheap push down low. So Providence and either Maryland or St. Louis cut it up this weekend, 19th and 20th. This game's available on either ESPN News, ESPN2, or ESPNU. Bucket's good for Byron Smith. Nice shot by Smith. Very smooth. Picking up a little token pressure. Nothing real, though. Norchak. Putting that perfect streak on the line, he misses. So Omir now eight of nine tonight. And now Florida a and turns it over. Huh? He's, I'm eight of eight, I'm gonna bomb one up from three. I think he was feeling it, he thought that might go to, as well, so. Robert McCullum not happy with the Rattlers. Turning the ball over way too much here tonight. There's a whistle. A little too much jostling over there on the sideline. The referees have kept it pretty tight tonight. It's been a pretty clean game, and part of it is because they have kept on it and kept it tight. Quick first half, too. Had the one timeout. Or I guess we had the two timeouts called by Ford a and m Omir misses. So. Omir's now he's ice cold. He's over his last two. <laughs> ice cold. Smith for three. No good. Wong hits the deck, and that's yeah. going to be a foul. He thought about not calling that, but he saw he had to because it really affected the transition at the other end. 48 34 rebounds for North Chad O'Meara. Tell you, he's really getting it done tonight. And just watching the Hurricanes, they have you know three or four guys that could score 30 points on any given night. Really nice to have that kind of uh, versatility amongst your team. Look at Poplar, Jordan Miller, Bensley Joseph, Isaiah Wong, and Anthony Walker out there for Miami Smith, Chapman, Bates, Bars, and Tillman, the five on the floor for the Rattlers. Miami by 14, 15, 40 left to play here tonight. Look at Poplar to the rack, high off the glass, it's good. He's so opportunistic, right? He dribbles the ball and once he keeps dribbling until somebody stops him. And if nobody's there to stop him, he's going all the way. Left-handed finish. Jordan Chapman in transition. One pass, one dribble, and up the floor come the Rattlers. Nice transition basketball right there. 
Wong working on Smith inside. He floats and fades away. No good. An easy put back for Miller. Great position by Miller. He got snuck inside on the offside. And easy bucket for him. And now Miller nearly has a takeaway. Chase Bars was screaming for the basketball down low. Thought he had a mismatch, uh, mismatch on Jordan Miller, but he snuck right around the back of Bars and swatted it out of bounds. Tarig Issa checks back in for Florida AM. Career high 13 points for Wooga Poplar here tonight. There's a takeaway by Jordan Miller in transition, and that gets swatted away by Jalen Bates. Jordan looking for a foul there. Let's see if there's contact here. Yeah, maybe he kicked him with the right foot a little bit. Yeah, he kind of wound up and swatted at the ball. Usually they do call that. Miller was pleading his case with Bill Covington Jr., Anthony Walker. Come up empty again. Boy, he's having a heck of a time from the field to start his season. Three air balls here tonight. Couple of threes that didn't get anywhere near the rim. So something to work on for Walker as Miami heads towards Providence this weekend to Connecticut. Good matchup, good tournament. Nice early season test for the Kings. Foul on the floor. Isaiah Wong with a hold. Trying to keep it clean again. Quick trigger for Smith. Wow, that was a tough shot. Elevated, knock it home. Off balance from the free throw line. Quick, quick trigger. Nicely done by Byron Smith. Walker on the baseline, up top for Poplar. He fires away, rattles in and out. Isaiah Wong with the offensive rebound. Bensley Joseph will fire away for three and hit. He can hit, he can hit those threes. Yeah, he can, he hit a few against Lafayette the other night. So he's really, up. Oh, somebody fell asleep there. Coach L's not happy about that either. Bensley Joseph, a 6'2 sophomore guard out of Arlington, Massachusetts. A true point guard, strong knowledge of how to quarterback his team on the offensive end. He is Miami's best defender, and he can pressure the basketball. Wong spins in the paint, hands it off to Anthony Walker, who gets himself a bucket. Fantastic creative play by Wong. He drove hard to the middle, pulled up, waited on his man to cut, hit him right down low. Fantastic play. Underneath the bucket is good on the second chance opportunity for Jalen Bates. Hitting him with a little token pressure here again. A little three quarters man. Isaiah Wong for three is no good. Back comes Florida AM in transition, trailing by 15 with 12.30 left to play. There's that jump switch. A double team up top there. And now a running float over the right hand. No good for Byron Smith. He didn't catch anything. Poplar up top for Walker. No good. Miller for two. That was a good run the floor for, uh, for Miller. Catch that uh, follow, through, follow up right there. Arlen Beverly and Norchad O'Meara set to check back in for Miami. Bucket's good for Tariq Issa, sophomore out of Toronto. 10 feet away on the baseline. Next whistle under 12 media timeout. Miller thought about pulling up for a three. Now he's got to take it away. Another turnover by Miami. In the paint, in transition, swat of the way. Tillman trying to go for the left hand. Here comes Wooga Poplar! He might have cocked back a little more that time. A little more showtime right there. Again, created by the defense, right, Kyle? That's really what's going on out here. Miami's really amping up the defense and getting some easy buckets at the other end. Great vision of the court by the guards. 
Boy, can he put on a show. Mm. Tillman driving. Open man. No good. We play on. Miami leading by 17 now. Their largest lead of the game. Anthony Walker, I'm going to keep trying this, he says. He got the rim that time, but it rolled off the right side. Miami staying in that man-to-man, -man, that hard-nosed man. Foul on the floor, blocking foul is going to be called. 10.25 left to play here tonight. It's all Miami, and it's the Wooga Poplar Show. It's a cup of coffee. Join the ACC Huddle crew. They'll be with you from Truist Field in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Wake Forest University gets you set for another full day of football. They'll also have halftime shows, pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. Then at 6.30, listen, folks. Hit the recliner, hang out. It's a full day of football. Get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon's games. Get you set for the primetime matchup between Syracuse and Wake Forest on ACC Network at 8 o'clock. It's all on the ACC Network in the ESPN app. A couple of big scores here for Miami tonight. O'Meara's got 17, Poplar 15, Miller's got 14. Bucket is good for the Rattlers. Back within 15. Rattlers are probably going to try to make their final stand here to get back in this game, so. The scores to update you on from the Atlantic Coast Conference here tonight. Mention Florida State and the troubles that they're off to this season. Louisville's in the same boat. They just lost 61 to 60. Tried a furious comeback in the second half against Appalachian State tonight, but Louisville Lost at the buzzer to Bellarmine last Wednesday. They lost to Wright State by one. They lost to App State by one. They've suffered three losses to start their season. All by one point. How about that? 67-66, 73-72, 61-60. Louisville 0-3 to start the year. Wow. Woof. It's going to be one of those years, I think, Kyle. Colgate is beating the brakes off of Syracuse at the Dome tonight. Utah Valley's got a second-half lead on Wake Forest. North Carolina's down early, but uh, that's in the first half. Duke and Kansas coming up tonight. That'll be a fun matchup on ESPN. Yes, it will. It'll be another exciting year in the ACC. Teams will... Get hot. Go a little chemistry. There's a takeaway in transition. Bensley Joseph! Count the bucket and the foul! I don't even think he knows he's going to the free throw line. There he is, going up strong with the left hand. I'm not sure there's a, let's see the foul here. In the face of Hans Luis Jean. Got him. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Takes it up strong. Elevate and celebrate. Teams went wild. We've had quite a few dunks here tonight, Kyle. Yeah. It's been interesting. It's been fun. Yeah. Any questions coming into the game about Miami's ability to jump and dunk the basketball have uh, been silenced. Three is no good. O'Meer in transition. And nearly turned it over. Bensley Joseph's caught up. Now O'Meer skies to get the basketball. Uh, and Nigel Pax got himself an easy bucket, or maybe not. The second chance opportunity for Jordan Miller is good. That was the first dunk of Bensley Joseph's career with authority. That's a good one, Kyle. Take that one all season long. Miami continues to show unselfishness on the offensive end. It's so impressive to watch. They really don't care who scores. Well, I think you make a great point. 
Miller's got 16 tonight. O'Meara's got the 17. Poplar, a career-high 15. You ask a majority of the pundits, they're going to say Wong and Pack are going to fill up the scoring sheet. Miami's going to win. Wong and Pack have got to do it. Joseph to O'Meara, who gets tied up. Oh, look at that. The strength by Norchad O'Meara, who was just hanging in the air with his back to the baseline, threw it off the window and got it to go. That is sheer strength and a credit to the Miami strength training program here. Arlen Beverly in control of the basketball. He takes it himself to the rim. Way too strong that time. But anyway, back to our conversation here. Pax got four, Wong's got four. Now, Isaiah Wong has tied a career high with the six assists. Very, very interesting, though, how it's all playing out, similar to how these guys went on in an Elite Eight run last year. North Chad Miami down here in Coral Gables tonight, putting on a display of slam dunks one after another. I'll tell you, they're clicking tonight. First half was a little up and down, but they sure are playing right now. Well, Nigel Pack nearly turned it over once, and he does on his second opportunity to throw the ball up the floor to Jordan Miller. A little sloppy out of timeout for Miami. It was 7.30 showing on the game clock here in Miami. O'Meara behind the back pass. Ball's on the deck. Miller has it. Hands it off to Pack. In the paint. Slows up. Over in the corner, Harlan Beverly has a smile on his face as he lets it go. Nigel Pack has the offensive rebound. Bensley Joseph floats with the right hand, no good. Nor Chad O'Meara puts it back up and in. He's got 21. Canes are making it look easy right now. Nor Chad O'Meara's career high in terms of points. He's got a ways to go. 35 versus the University of Louisiana Monroe on March the 3rd last season. So he's 14 points away in that department. He probably won't see the floor a whole lot down the stretch, I would imagine. Last thing you need is an injury. Absolutely. In a game like this. And there's an immediate turnover by Florida a and here in transition. Uh -huh. And Harlan Beverly just got caught up with the rim. Tried to throw it underneath to Norchad O'Meara but he threw it off FAMU, and it'll remain Miami basketball. 6.42 left to play. Nice showing here from Miami tonight. Underneath were Jordan Miller. They nearly caught FAMU sleeping again on that same play. Nigel Pack just tried to bomb one up in the face of Hans Luis Jean, and that didn't go all that well for Pack. Miller hustling back and getting a steal right there. Canes may take a little air out of it. Not much, but a little. And that's an offensive foul underneath on Bensley Joseph. Let's see, see what, what we Bensley had. Yeah. Whip. Yep, can't do that. Yeah. He hugged Jordan Chapman and said, come this way as I clear out a little room here in the paint. That looked like a receiver and a DB <laughs> right there going at it. Now, Murray, are you a Clemson Tiger at heart? Are you a Clemson football fan? Absolutely. Um, don't want to talk too much about the year yet, but, um, you know, they're, they're, Dabo will get them back. They'll get it together. They'll regroup. They've had a couple rough games this year. But How about last year? Everybody was so down on them, but they won 10 games. Yeah, Crazy, it's tough. It? Yeah, it's tough. It's a little of the uh, Nick Saban Alabama treatment, right? Where they yes. they want you to win every year. They want you to win every game, and so. Um, but he's done just an unbelievable job with that program, and he'll get them back where they need to be. When you got drafted to the NBA, didn't you also get an NFL tryout with the Broncos? I actually got drafted by the Broncos in the twelfth round. So, After you got drafted in the NBA? Uh, the NFL draft was first. So I got drafted by the Broncos in the 12th round, and then a month later is when I got drafted by the Suns in the third round. So, <laughs> yeah. So I actually had a chance to, to 
I um, attended the Broncos minicamp before, before the NBA draft. So How was that? Awesome experience. I had a great time. It was a lot. Who were some of the players then? Well, John Elway was the quarterback. Was yeah. Um, Louis Wright, uh, Steve Watson was one of the big receivers at the time. Gary Kubiak was actually the backup. Wow. It was a fun. It was a fun experience. How long were you there? Well, I was I was there for the mini camp, which was about a week, and then <laughs> I came back to get ready for the NBA draft. So. Jordan Miller, four three. There it is. Good looking shot. Yeah, we've got a technical foul on Florida AM for flopping. You don't see that call very often, do you? No. So one shot for Wong, he makes it. Career high nine points for Bensley Joseph here tonight. Boy, look at him play defense. Yes, sir. On your right and left hip. And just will not let go. Moving those feet. Always moving those feet. That'll be Florida and in basketball. It knocked off the hip of North Chattel Mir. Kane still playing hard nosed defense. It's pretty funny. Miami had posted a old video on Twitter or Instagram. I think I might have seen it on Instagram. And all the players were asked, what is it that North Chattel Mir says when he gets on the block and asks for the basketball? And what he tells his teammates is baby food. Baby food. He's saying they can't guard me. They're too small. Give me the basketball. Interesting. <laughs> you, you know, as, as an old ex-post player myself, it's good to see players who have the mentality of a post player, which is, I want the ball, right? You've got to ask for the ball. You've got to beg for the ball. And if you get it, you have to produce, or the guards aren't going to keep coming to you. That really misses the three. Or... Joseph will reset the 15 on the shot clock. Demands the basketball. Very confident. You have to demand the basketball, and you have to be confident in what you can do with it once you catch it down. Facing there. the basket or back to the basket. Three on the shot clock. Bombs away. No good. For the first time tonight, we'll see a newcomer, Christian Watson, freshman of Maryland. Four star top 125 recruit checks in for Miami. A.J. Casey's also going to come into this game. He, too, a premier top 100 recruit in Illinois. Averaged 19 points a game in high school. Committed to Miami over to Paul Gonzaga, Memphis, Michigan, and Ohio State. Nice round of applause for North Channel Mir. Yeah, he played a heck he of a game tonight. Yep. Timeout on the floor. Coach L calls a time. We'll take a quick break. Here's Saturday's Week 12 ACC Network College football lineup. Noon Eastern, 7-3 Duke has won three straight. They square off against 6-4 Pittsburgh. They've won two straight. Then North Carolina State in Louisville to take on the Cardinals. They has capped off. Prime time matchup on the network. Wake Forest will host Syracuse at Truist Field in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. 75-52, Miami leads with Murray Jarman. I'm Kyle Seeloff. Good to be with you. Thanks for spending a part of your night with us here at the Watts Go Center this evening. So A.J. Casey and Christian Watson into the game for Miami, two players to keep an eye on. Casey in the paint, throws it off the glass, and it's in. And good. Instant impact. Really good. These guys can get some time, right? Get them loosened up and ready for the season. Those are the first two points of A.J. Casey's collegiate career. And uh, the first of what many people will think will be a ton for the Hurricanes and A.J. Casey. Now favor Ira, another big-time prospect for Coach Ellis set the check-in. Time to take another break, our final one here tonight. Hurricanes lead at 77-55. The young guns are in when we come back.
stretch the final three minutes and 15 seconds. A.J. Casey, Christian Watson, Faber Ira, and Donald Yovanovic are all four-star prospects. Casey and Watson in the top 100. Yovanovic is out due to uh, a, a bit of a, he's got a, he's got a little sickness going on. So he's not in there tonight. But who has checked in is Ja'Kai Robinson. He is a redshirt freshman out of Ossining, New York. Redshirted last season to retain eligibility. So he's a four-star prospect. A.J. Casey's a four-star prospect. So, too, is Watson and Iray. So four four-star prospects in the game right now with Bensley Joseph. It'll be fun to watch here. There's be a lot of adrenaline on the court, you know, out on the court getting some time and being excited about trying to make some, make some plays out there. So but those guys are all used to it, right? They're used to the big time, so... Watson misses both free throws, trying to convert on his first collegiate point. Christian Watson, an outstanding run and jump athlete. His size and skill give him the flexibility to play multiple positions. Buckets good underneath for Peyton Williams. So Bensley Joseph will run the point. And he'll try to get the offense set up and in order in the front court for Miami. And Joseph just turned it over. Watson hits the deck, and that's going to be a foul on Christian Watson. Yeah, Christian, Watson go ahead. climbed under a little bit on that play. Good hustle play. Watson, a uh, big boy, 6'7", 209, added 50 pounds to his power clean and 35 pounds to his bench press between June of this past summer and September. So in just a span of a few months, between his arrival in September, bigger, faster, and stronger, like many of these Hurricanes have, as A.J. Casey pulls down the rebound. Casey will bomb one away for three and hit. Okay, here's the deal. If you take a look at these guys on the floor, they're all really, really good four-star prospects. A.J. Casey, to me, sticks out a little bit, Murray. Yeah, he does. You can see it right there. He... Uh... Caught the ball with confidence, looked at, the, looked at the hoop, and took a shot, and that was it. Looks very comfortable out there right now. Very athletic, very tall, very long. Watson just picked up his second foul. It's pretty neat to see three true freshmen, one redshirt freshman, and Bensley Joseph, a true sophomore, uh, on the floor with one another. And look, I think people will discount this to an extent as, okay, you've nearly got a 30-point lead. But this is an opportunity for Coach L on this stage in this type of game, understanding it's a blowout, to say, you know what? We're going to give you a little burn here late in a blowout game. If you handle yourself accordingly, I'm looking to find guys I can count on to give me five, ten minutes potentially in ACC play if somebody gets in trouble. This means something to these guys. Absolutely it does. It shows you're ready. It shows you've listened and you've learned what, what he's tra been trying to teach you all year. And it's an opportunity for you to show yourself and how you handle it under pressure. And it absolutely goes toward Coach L figuring out who, who he can count on to come in off the bench when he needs it. Five on the shot clock. Joseph fires away for three. Oof. He was backpedaling because he knew it was going in. Haven't made a ton of threes tonight. They're six of 22. Made 13 against UNCG last Friday. Down with the rebound is Williams. Three on the way, and it's good for Jalen Bates. Florida a and will pick up full court. Ja'Kai Robinson has the basketball. Working on Jordan Chapman. A lot of dribbling. Uses a high screen. One minute left to play in Miami here tonight. Foul on Bensley Joseph. And that'll send Joseph to the line for a one and one opportunity. No, I guess that was just the 16th foul from Florida a &M. Richard Matthews, sophomore guard out of Estero, Florida, checks in for Florida AM as we wind down here in Miami tonight. 
But Casey thought about a three. Left hand dribble in the paint, finds the open man Watson for three in the corner. It's good. Tell you what, great court vision by Casey. Absolutely. Could have selfishly just tried to take down one of the rack, but he found Watson. There's that same mentality that all the Canes have is that selfishness, right? They're looking for the open shot. They're looking to give it to who can score. Miami basketball. He's going to be a good one. He's going to be a good one. Look at this, Murray. Yep. Kicks it out to the corner. Great vision, like you said, Kyle, and bam, wide open. And Christian Watson, who committed to Miami over Florida, Georgetown, Illinois, LSU, Marquette, North Carolina State, Pittsburgh, Rutgers, and South Carolina. If you would have told Miami Hurricanes fans 12 years ago that Jim Laranega is going to have four four-stars that are young on his roster, not to mention the Isaiah Wongs of the world, Nigel Pack. I don't think people would have believed you if uh, you kind of wrote this script and said this is how it's going to play out over the course of Coach L's first 12 years in Miami. It's been unbelievable. He and his staff deserve a ton of credit and getting the buy-in from the players that uh, he's got to come down here to the U. Absolutely. He's built a program here now that, as you said, players want to come here. They yeah. want to be a part of the program. The final eight last year was huge for them, and I think that um, he's just going to keep that pipeline going. Look at Watson, that. in underneath the favor eye ray, and he'll head to the free throw line. You could see Bensley Joseph up here at the logo telling favor eye ray. He was whispering to him, post up, post up. He kept telling him to post up had an opportunity to slam one home. But he's got a chance now from the free throw line. The sophomore trying to help, to help the freshman, right? Makes his first. His first points as a Miami Hurricane. That's Favor Iray, F-A-V-O-U-R-A-I-R-E. Freshman center at 6'11 and 215 pounds. Another guy, Miami in need of some height. If you can prove yourself that you're not a liability on the floor, it's an opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of those things you can't coach, right? How many times have you heard that? You can't coach height. So if you can get it and use it to your advantage, and there we go. This ball game is over. Coach L and the boys win it 87-61. Your final thoughts here, Murray? Hurricanes came out a little slow again tonight, but boy, did they turn it on in the second half, and they looked fantastic from the defensive end. Turned into a lot of fun stuff at the other end. Canes are 3-0 and for Murray and our entire production crew here in Miami. I'm Kyle saying so long and good night from the U. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on the ACC Network, go ahead and download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us from Miami.